Hi everyone, and welcome to Gwen Collects. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that I have not talked about on my channel before, uh, and I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about price figures. Uh, if you've watched me for a while, you would know that I actually started in this hobby with scales, which I feel like is a fairly like uncommon way to start collecting anime figures. I think most people start with prize figures and then later on move to scales, but for me I was like, nope, let's just wreck the wallet now. <laughs> uh, so I actually started with the Shinra Kusakabe Artifacts J figure, that was my first figure actually. So I didn't actually buy a prize figure for a little while when I started collecting. Um, I had this mindset of like, no, I want scale figures, like, I'd rather not waste my money on these smaller, cheaper figures, I'd rather just, like, save up and only buy scales. Uh, my mindset's changed a little bit. Um, I've picked up a few prize figures just kind of over the course of collecting because sometimes prize figures are really damn cute. So, uh, I have picked up a few prize figures and I recently picked up two that I'm obsessed with and I thought, you know what, I think it's time to make a video dedicated to prize figures. Um, I know a lot of people love them and I've really been falling in love with them lately too. So I'm just happy to be showing off some more like affordable options for once. Uh, <laughs> I feel like a lot of people A, don't want to and B, just can't afford to spend hundreds of dollars on figures every month. So I think this video is gonna be a great way to show you guys some more accessible options that, in my opinion, can be just as good as scale figures. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the types of prize figures. Now, this is just what I've learned. I'm not super active, like, in the prize figure community, so I may be wrong. Please correct me in the comments if I am wrong about any of this. But from what I've gathered is there's kind of, like, three types of prize figures. There's typically like the crane game prize figures, so the main ones that we all see that are just like the more affordable prize figures out there. Um, and then there are Ichiban Kuji figures, which are like, I've heard they're like a little bit higher quality prize figures, and they're typically won by buying tickets in Japan. I think at like 7-Elevens and stuff. <laughs> uh, so you buy like lottery tickets, and then those tickets can like win different prizes and there's like different tiered prizes and a lot of those prizes are often figures but I think there's other merchandise you can win as well. So those are Ichiban Kuji figures and then there are also Gashapon or trading figures so they're usually like little chibi guys. They look pretty cute. I think you get them from those like games where you like put the money in and then you twist the thing and the ball comes out. I could be wrong. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that but that's kind of what I've gathered. So those are the three main types. Um, but the two that I have experience with and the two that I'm going to be talking about in this video are just like Crane Game normal prize figures and Ichiban Kuji figures. And uh, yeah. So typically Crane Game prize figures are much easier to purchase if you don't live in Japan. Uh, typically you'll be able to order them from say like Ami Ami, Tokyo Otaku Mode, different shops like Crunchyroll, that kind of thing. So the pri those prize figures kind of get stocked everywhere. Um, there are sometimes like <clears throat> there are sometimes like crane exclusives, so they'll be like a different color or a different face or something like that. Taito does these a lot, um, where they'll be like the Taito online crane exclusive, and they'll look a little bit different than the other normal crane figures by them. But they're typically easier to get just from like normal shops, and you can sometimes actually also pre-order these figures. Ichiban Kuji can be a little bit tougher because they are won through those lotteries. The best place I've found to pick up Ichiban Kuji is typically pre-owned. That's the easiest way. Um, I would say AmiAmi pre-owned section gets them fairly often, uh, Mandarake gets them fairly often, but the best place to shop for Ichiban Kuji figures is definitely through like a proxy service and going through like Yahoo Japan auctions and Mercari. Um, they seem to be the best place because people will win the figures and then put them up for sale there. So I typically use Bai <laughs> um, as my proxy agent, but there's tons of proxy agents out there. Um, and you're able to bid on these figures. And they typically sell in the range of around like 4,000 yen to 6,000 yen. 
in like Yahoo Japan auctions and on Mercari, so they're a little bit more expensive than the typical like crane game prize, but they're usually I think better quality. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about each prize figure brand and then as I talk about them I'll show you my prize figures that I have from those brands specifically. I think that'll be a good way to kind of incorporate the tour of my collection with the kind of discussion of the brands themselves. So we're gonna start with my number one favorite prize figure brand and that is Taito or Taito. I still don't know how to say it. We're gonna go with Taito. Um, uh, so Taito is, I think, a favorite among a lot of collectors, especially scale figure collectors that buy the odd prize figure. I think Taito's like the, the, the one that a lot of people use, or the one that a lot of people buy from. Um, so some things I love about Taito figures is their seasonal Miku line is so nice. Oh, let me get my Taito figure that I have. So as you can see here, I have a Taito figure. This is from the Seasonal Miku line. This is the Autumn Miku. I think it's the third, third season version. Um, and she is so cute. She was actually the first prize figure I ever bought. Um, just cause I saw her on like my figure collection and stuff. And I w I'm in love. She's so cute and I just love the colors, like teals and navies and oranges and reds are my favorite colors. Like just those combinations of colors are just chef's kiss. I just, they make my brain happy. So when I saw her, I knew I had to have her. Um, at the time, I didn't know you could pre-order Taito figures and she'd been announced a long time ago, so I wouldn't have been able to pre-order her anyway. But I picked her up from the Ami Ami pre-owned section in BB condition and she was like, I think like 1100 yen, like she was so affordable. And uh, yeah, I was super, super pumped to uh, to pick her up. So yeah, she is my only Taito prize figure, but I do have another one coming this month. So I'm excited about that. Um, but yeah, I love the seasonal Miku line and I think they are just like some of the best prize figures out there. <laughs> uh, another thing I really like about Taito figures is I find that their um, scale is actually really good. Like, she's honestly the size of a 1 8 figure, so she really doesn't look out of place in my collection. I know prize figures can sometimes be a little bit undersized, um, but I really think Miku is just like such a nice size, and she looks great beside my uh, 1 8 figures. Um, especially, I love her beside Chitanda. I'll put a little picture that I took of them. It's up on my Instagram, at GwenCollects, <laughs> if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, I just think she looks super nice with figures, and yeah, I love her. Another thing I really love about Taito figures is that they have really nice bases. Um, a lot of prize figures can have really kind of crap bases. I think Ban Presto is worse for this, uh, but Taito figures seem to always have really cute bases. Like this one specifically is clear orange and it just has like a pattern printed on it. And honestly, I have some scale figure bases that are worse than this one. <laughs> so yeah, I really love it and I love that they, they actually put effort into their bases for these figures. Uh, my only gripe with Taito is I find that their character selection can be a little bit lacking sometimes. They make a lot of like Rems um, and a lot of Mikus and it's just kind of like a lot of repeated ones. They've made a lot of Mai's as well, but they are starting to expand their horizons a little bit. There's recently like a Wonder Egg priority, is it Aoi? Uh, that they announced? buying her immediately. Love that anime. Well, love the first like 11 episodes of that anime. <laughs> um, and obviously they're making a Chiga. I pre-ordered that so fast on Tom. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, I like that they're expanding their character selection and I think if they continue to expand their character selection, they are gonna be like just the best prize figure company if they aren't already. The last thing that is really nice about Taito is their figures are pretty easy to get for us Westerners that don't live in Japan. Um, often they'll actually go up for pre-order, so you can get them on Tokyo Otaku Mode seems to be the best place, but you can get them on AmiAmi Ami if you're lucky and snag one quickly. Uh, often AmiAmi Ami will upload them for pre-order without the photos, so you kind of have to like read the descriptions, but you can pre-order them that way. Um, and yeah, 
they, they also pop up super often on like Ami Ami Pre-Owned and Mandarake. Um, so they're very easy to get. Even the Tato Online exclusives are pretty easy to get as well. All right, next up we have Bandai Spirits, Ban Presto, Bandai, I don't know. I think from what I could find online, they've like merged into one company. I think all under the Bandai Spirits logo, but they're all essentially kind of in the same realm. Um, and they are huge, huge heavy hitter in the figure, prize figure uh, scene. I think they're probably like the biggest prize figure manufacturer. They make tons and tons of prize figures. Uh, I find they tend to be of varying quality. Sometimes they turn out mwah, and sometimes they turn out kind of meh. Um, but yeah, so there is the Ban Presto Bandai kind of line. Um, let's see, what did I like about them? Okay, first thing I love about them is the Fig Arts Zero line. They're like kind of prize figures. I would say they're prize figures still, even though they're a bit more elaborate. Um, so these figures are... I showed one of them in one of my previous videos. He's like below my chair, so I'm probably not gonna get him out for this video. I'll put B-roll of it, but I got the Senku Ishigami um, Fig Art Zero figure. So they're often like a little bit of a smaller scale, maybe one ninth, one tenth, and they always have like these very elaborate bases. I know they make a lot of One Piece ones. They've made obviously like Senku from Dr. Stone, tons of Demon Slayer ones, and I think they are freaking phenomenal. You get huge bang for your buck. They go up for pre-order as well, so they're a little bit more um, like high quality compared to like crane prizes, I would say. Uh, but yeah, they are such a good figure line and I would definitely include them in this prize figure realm. But yeah, obsessed. Um, the quality of the figure at zero line can be like a little bit hit or miss, uh, but in my opinion, like, I think I got the Senku for like f around 5,000 yen. Like, you're not taking a huge risk with that amount of money, in my opinion, compared to like a $200, $300 scale figure. So I think there's a bit more leeway to kind of have hit or miss figures. But in my opinion, most of them are hits, especially for that price range. Like, if you see a figure at zero that you really like, I know the Shinobu one is stunning. Um, I would definitely recommend picking them up. I don't think I would pay like above retail price though. Like try to pay retail price for them and you will be so happy I think with your purchase. But yeah, they're really, really nice. I love that line. Uh, I do actually own an Ichiban Kuji by Ban Presto. I think Bandai Spirits, I don't know. And it is the Rem and Ram Pudding a la Mode figure. So it was actually one of the first few figures I got. Um, I got it for my birthday actually. Um, someone bought it from a local shop so Again, Ichiban Kuji can sometimes be like stocked, not for like the the draw. I guess like stores can just stock it sometimes. Um, and the Rem and Ram Pudding Ella mode is really, really cute. Um, I really like them. I think they're very high quality, the, the girls themselves. The pudding cup is a little meh, but I would say it's really nice and it does feel a little bit nicer. I think because it's an Ichiban Kuji than say like just a crane prize by Ben Presto, but yeah, I, I think they can make some really, really nice ones, kind of from the Ichiban Kuji line. Uh, another thing I would say about Ban Presto is I think their bases are pretty lackluster a lot of the time, a lot of just plain black bases. Um, I recently got a Tatsumaki prize figure from them, and actually I don't think I've shown her in a video yet. Perfect, so this will be almost like a little mini haul. Yeah, I recently got a Tatsumaki from One Punch Man. My boyfriend and I watched One Punch Man and I was like, I need something Tatsumaki. And that prize figure was up for pre-order on Ami Ami, so I was like, bye. <laughs> and she turned out so cute, but she does have like a really boring black base. So there's that. Um, I did recently pick up, let me grab her. This Racing Miku here um, by Ban Presto, and um, she's really cute. I really like her, and actually I think her base is like pretty fair. Uh, it's like sparkly purple. It feels a little bit cheap, but like it's cute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say like Bandai's like um, bases are much more lackluster. 
They're much more lackluster compared to Taito's, but they're not terrible. Um, this one does have like a big support rod for her, although she kind of hides it, so I don't think it's a big deal. Um, but yeah, she's so cute. I guess another one that I recently picked up, so I've never shown her on the channel. But I really, really love her. I love this like Racing Miku style, so... Um, yeah, she's the 2020 Haragi version, I think, of Racing Miku. And she's freaking adorable. I love her so much. And one other thing I really, really appreciate about Bandai as compared to brands like Taito is I think they're way more adventurous in the prize figures that they make and that can sometimes lead to misses but they do make a lot more like lesser known characters and sometimes they like branch into like recently I saw they're making one fourth scale Ichiban Kuji prizes of the Ava girls like I have to get my hands on those they look so good like I'm so excited about that so I do really appreciate the fact that they're kind of like trying to branch out in the prize figure scene and like if like their one fourths turn out good like that'll be a game changer like imagine like a $60 killer one fourth of Asuka can we ask for more like I love it I also feel like as like an aside like, I find even though scale figure prices are rising, I feel like prize figures are becoming like such a good alternative. Like older prize figures I've seen, I'm kind of like, mm. but newer prize figures, I'm like, these look so good. And they're like 20 bucks. Like I've seen prize figures for like 800 yen that are like super nice. I may be like, scale figures are getting more expensive, but really don't just disregard prizes. Cause honestly, honestly, Prize figures are coming for scale figures. Like, that's all I gotta say. All right, next up, I'm going to be talking about, I feel like the king of noodle stoppers, <laughs> and that is Furyu. So Furyu is, I think, also a pretty well-known prize figure company. Um, they've also started branching into scale figures with their FNAX line, which are pretty nice, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think they're really the king, the king company when it comes to noodle stoppers. So I actually have a noodle stopper right here. I've showed her on my channel a few times, uh, but this is the Miku, I think like China dress version noodle stopper from Furyu. And oh my God, she is my favorite prize figure. Okay. I asked my boyfriend, like, what's your favorite figure in my collection? He looks me in the eye and says this one. And honestly, she's really damn cute. <laughs> um, I picked her up from Crunchyroll, actually. She came in stock. I had like the, I set the email reminder just in case she like came in stock and she did. And for some reason, Crunchyroll stocked them with this like cool base. I know not all of them came with this base, but if you ordered from some shops, for some reason, you got this cool base with her. Um, I think I overpaid for this prize figure a little bit. She was about, well, the only reason I overpaid is because I had to pay for shipping. Um, that's another thing. I typically ship all of my prize figures from Ami Ami. Um, and I just ship them untracked and it's usually about $9 to like $15 to ship them untracked. So typically what I'm paying for prize figures from Ami Ami is about $30 Canadian, maybe $35 Canadian. So it's never too crazy. Um, but this one I paid $22 US, but then I paid 20 USD to ship her. <laughs> Bro, this is a clown moment, but but honestly, she was so worth it. She's so cute. So I spent like 50 or $60 Canadian on this, but that said, she's really cute and I honestly think she was wor worth it. So yeah, she's my only noodle stopper and honestly, she's a freaking adorable noodle stopper, I must say. Um, anyway, back to Furyu. Um, ooh, Furyu has the Buy Cute Bunnies line and they are like much bigger than your typical prize figure scale. I find they look really good in a collection of scale figures because they are bigger, so they like fit in with scale figures. Um, I think the Buy, Buy Cute Bunnies are like, they were a huge hit. And honestly, for good reason, they're really cute. Um, they have actual tights, which I think is really neat for a prize figure. Um, and yeah, they were really well priced. Um, the Mikus are super cute. The Sonico I don't like as much, but she's also really cute. 
Um, I think they're making Rem and Ram in the line as well. So it's still limited right now, but I think it's a really great line if you're like looking for affordable bunny figures that have like impact in your collection. Um, I would say though, they've gotten a little bit <laughs> overplayed and a lot of people were selling them for like a hundred dollars. Like do not pay that. Do not pay that. Like it's not worth it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say the Buy Cute Bunny line is really cute. Maybe a little bit over purchased at this point. I think a lot of people have them in their collection, but if you love them, you do you. They're really nice prize figures. Uh, one grab I have with Furyu is same with this Miku. Um, they tend to like switch up their bases randomly. Like sometimes if you bought this Miku from like specific stores, she just came on her own. But if you bought her from other stores, you could get her with this base. Like I don't understand why and they didn't really specify that you would get her with this base or not like it was just like some people did and some people didn't and like with the bi cute mikus some of theirs came with backdrops some of theirs came with big oval bases some of theirs came with circular bases like it's just very strange it seems like they just switched up their manufacturing on them so that's one thing to be aware of with furyu um i typically prefer to buy furyu like in the aftermarket so pre-owned and stuff um so that you can kind of figure out what the base is going to look like based on what store you're buying from. But yeah, a little bit weird that they sometimes just switch up the bases randomly. And the last company I'm going to talk about is Sega. So Sega is another pretty big prize figure manufacturer. Um, I own one prize figure from Sega and it is by far my worst prize figure. I still love her though. Let me grab her. So I own the um, platelet prize figure from Haraku Saibo, where it sells at work. Um, and she is adorable and huge. Okay, I got to admit, she's huge. I love how big she is for a prize figure. And I think her base, it's kind of dusty. Ooh. <laughs> I keep her outside my detolf. I keep her on my computer. So <laughs> she gets a little more dusty than my detolf uh, buddies do. But um, what was I saying? Oh. Uh, I wanted a platelet figure really, really bad. I love cells at work. Um, it's the it's the inner scientist in me, you know? <laughs> um, so I really wanted a platelet figure and I liked the one by <laughs> Fox Japan, but it was really expensive, like so expensive. And I was like, how much better quality is it really gonna be than the Sega figure? Like, let's be real. <laughs> so I went for the Sega prize figure because I saw her pop up on Omiomi, I think for like 1900 yen. Uh, she was pre-owned. I grabbed her. And um, there's a lot of things I'm really happy about with this figure. The size, the base, the face is so cute. And I love the pose. And from afar, I think she looks awesome. But up close is where it kind of falls apart a little bit. Her flag is way too heavy for the pole that it gives, so it just like flops it down. <laughs> and uh, she leans back a bit, and like the paint job on her boots is kind of sloppy, and there's absolutely no shading on her shirt or shorts or anything. Uh, her hair has a little bit of shading though. But yeah, she's uh, she's mm, mid quality. Uh, my notes on Sega are that honestly, none of their prize figures really ever interest me that much. I see them pop up, but they're never really characters that I'm super into other than this one. Um, and they don't really turn out that well very often, in my opinion. Um, yeah, there is one other Sega set that I think is really cute, but the pro prototype photos looked way better than the actual ones. Uh, and it's the Kaworu and Shinji set. I think they're still really cute. Um, and I know a lot of people love them, but again, Sega, I feel like is the worst for like actually delivering a 10 out of 10 prod product. So while I would recommend buying prize figures from Bandai, from Furyu, and from Taito, I would not recommend buying Sega prize figures. I've just never really been impressed. And the one time I did buy, I'm not, I'm not super impressed with this girl, but she's very cute and I'm, I'm happy I got a, a platelet. <laughs> and honestly, uh... At least she's in one piece. I don't think you could say the same about the Fox one, so. Hey everyone, editing Gwen here to say I am an idiot and forgot to talk about uh, pop-up parade figures. So pop-up parade figures are essentially Good Smile Company's affordable figure line. Um, they typically are in the range of like $30 to $40 for a pop-up parade figure. 
um, and they're marketed as being kind of like between a scale figure and a prize figure, um, hence the in-between price, I would say. Uh, and I can't believe I didn't mention them because they are a really, really nice option for people who don't want to buy scales but do want to buy some like nicer prize figures. Um, I don't currently own any, but I have one pre-ordered the Mako pop-up parade from Kill a Kill because Mako is one of my top waifus. I love Mako more than anything in the world. <laughs> so I had to get her pop-up parade. Maybe we'll get a scale one day though. Uh, my thoughts quickly on pop-up parades, um, because I'm editing this and I realize this video is already long, <laughs> is pop-up parades can be really, really nice. I've heard their quality is a little bit up and down. Some pop-up parades turn out wonderful. Some pop-up parades turn out wonderfully, and then some turn out kind of meh, but never like terrible. Um, and yeah, I think they can be a really great option. I absolutely hate their bases. They have like these like clear plastic, like tall, ugly bases. I don't know why they do that, but I think if you can overlook the ugly base, <laughs> um, pop-up parades can be a really great option. That's kind of mid-tier and very accessible to everyone. Um, I've seen pop-up parades though at conventions, like people have posted pictures where like booths are trying to sell pop-up parades for like a hundred dollars. Don't ever pay more than like 40 to 50 dollars for a pop-up parade. Like it's not worth it. And they do re-releases all the time. So anyway, yeah, I thought I would mention that because I can't believe I forgot to talk about pop-up parades. They are a great option if you're looking for more affordable figures. Okay, back to the much higher quality Gwen. <laughs> Now, I thought I would just finish this video off with a few notes on affordable scale figures because I know this video is mainly on prize figures, but I thought I'd just put a little, put a little side note. Um, you don't need to be rich to buy really nice scale figures. Um, I know a lot of them can go for a ton when they're released and like on the pre-owned pre market, but there are some super, super great affordable options in scale figure territory as well that can almost be like the same price as prize figures sometimes. Um, the main company I would say to look out for is old altar figures are really awesome and they're often like super cheap. Like I'll look through Amiyami and put some b-roll and see if I can find any but like like old altar figures are like always high quality and they're often very affordable even like my K-On set I have here behind me. Um, like. Some of these figures, I think I got the Mio, like the school festival Mio, for like 4,000 yen. And she is stunning. She is absolutely beautiful. So I would definitely say like, while price figures can be awesome, if you are a little bit pinched for money, but you would really like to buy a scale, there are so many great affordable alternatives for scales. And with that, I also want to mention uh, Chinese manufacturers. They've been really coming out with some phenomenal figures. Um, one I pre-ordered recently that was pretty affordable, I'd say, is this little like tea cat. And you can put tea in the tin! <laughs> By Ribos. Um, I think she was about 6,000 yen on Amiyami and she's so cute and I bet you she's gonna turn out so wonderfully. So I would definitely say keep an eye out for Chinese manufacturers too because they often make really really cute figures for really really great prices. All right, so that is all for this prize figures video. I hope you enjoyed seeing my prize figure collection. Um, I haven't really talked a ton about them on my channel, so it feels really good to just, I don't know, present some more like fun options for you guys. Uh, I love my prize figures and I think even hardcore scale figure collectors should definitely consider adding a few prize figures to their collection. Um, they're just awesome. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, hearing my thoughts on the companies and I hope this helped anyone that's considering buying some prize figures um, Yeah, that was that was all I hoped for this video <laughs> So I hope you all have a very wonderful day and uh, I'll see you next time Bye